Thank you for joining us again. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. You're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast. Uh, this week, guys, we had some great feedback from Facebook. Yeah, it was more than more than usual, I would say. Yeah, it's it's really been growing. Uh, I want to say personally, I really appreciate getting the personal emails. That's paul at duramaxtuner.com if you'd like to hear something I have to say. Or cmkey at duramaxtuner.com for myself. Uh, I've been getting the emails as well. It's been awesome. Um, Thank you for allowing me to feel that I'm making an impact on your guys' life. So you means fools, a lot. yeah, right, you fools, you fuckers. <laughs> no, but seriously, guys, thank you so much. Absolutely. And speaking of, I had a really great email from Ryan Davis just this morning, yeah. which only gives you insight into how much preparation we put into this show. <laughs> um, okay, what Ryan had to say, Ryan Davis had to say, was, "Hey, Paul, want to say I listen to the podcast all the time and love it. Keep up the great content. I have a quick question though." currently have a 16 LML and I just got done installing a 10 mil CP3 and a Danville 65 millimeter stage two turbo. I was looking and getting into some new up pipes to get rid of the failure prone bellows on the OEM up pipes. I love all of the quality content right now, right? This was good information. Um, I know that the older model trucks, the manifolds are notched on the driver's side and restrict the flow, but that was somewhat fixed on the LML OEM manifold. Just curious what your thoughts are on replacing the OEM LML manifolds with a set of ProFab cast flow manifolds while I'm replacing the up pipes. Is there much of a flow gain compared to the newer LML manifold, and would it be worth the money, or should I just replace the up pipes and leave the factory manifolds alone? I guess, you know, kind of diving right into this, you know, we talked to so many people where the newer LML manifold is an upgraded option for the 01 to 10 guys. Right. The up pipes are definitely the weak link. I think this ties in really well with everything we always talk about with the guys over at like WC Fab, where they have a ton of experience with like not only the twin turbo kits and single turbo options, but they fabricate their own high flow two inch up pipes there in house. Um, So, you know, kind of touching back on what he's asking, I would just do two inch up pipes and just call it a day. And I think going with someone like WC Fab for those would be one of the best options. Yeah, no brainer. Absolutely. I would say in this situation, what we run into is if you're going to be in heavily modified fuel, yeah. then I can see the benefits of the the manifold right away, right? Yeah, because a I mean, single turbo, big fuel system, we could be seeing an EGT issue at some point. Uh, I mean, I, I think that can go two ways because there's if you look at some of the aftermarket manifolds and mm-hmm. you look at like just the LML manifolds themselves, he's on a single turbocharger, you know, like you said, high horsepower, thousand, twelve hundred horse, maybe a different scenario. Right. But he has a single turbocharger, you know, I'm sure Wybridge kit. I'm sure, you know, he hasn't really talked about much as far as Yeah, we as, didn't dive into a lot of the right. supporting mods, but you're right. So if you haven't done a Wybridge kit yet, that would be the other thing I would throw in with the up pipes from WC Fab. Right. I think that would make a ton of really, really clear sense. Once you get beyond that point, I hear what you're saying. Once we get into the higher horsepower applications, that's when we would look at upgrading the manifolds. Absolutely. The up pipes are a no-brainer for right now. That was an easy one. That was. That went a lot quicker than I'd expect. (laughs) (laughs) Ryan, we really appreciate you sending in a message to the podcast. I'll write up uh, a little bit less coherent information in an email and send it to you. <laughs> you know, one of the things, you know, uh, you know, we're always talking about Exergy, you know, Exergy provides us some quality content and I figured this would be a really nice topic to tie in Exergy for the calls that we're getting at the office recently here in the Midwest. And I mean, nationwide, it's been extremely cold. The guys that are experiencing 50, 60, 70 degree, you know, winter temperatures are now in the twenties. Yep. Us here when we're usually twenties, I mean, the last couple of weeks, it's been below zero. It's Absolutely. been brutal. So, you know, I guess t- kind of uh, kind of diving into it, you know, what's a don't when it comes to your diesel fuel system? Don't use a full bottle of 911 <laughs> because your truck gelled. That, that's not going to fix anything. That's going to be harmful to the engine. Just don't do that. We see this type of shit so often. Get, so guys dude, come out and they're like, my truck is gelled. So I bought a bottle of 911. 911 says the ratio to use on yep. it right on the side. It is never a full bottle. Yep. Um, it's also never a cap full. No. That doesn't no, do anything. Not right? at all. It's not also going to do anything when it's 20 below. And, and you're you have already a, gel. You're already fucking gel. It's right. Not, so you're going to you're gonna put the 911 in the tank. 
Right. And then that 911 is going to mysteriously work its way through the fuel lines, to the fuel filter, to your injection pump, through the rails, to the injectors. Right. No. No. Not, Absolutely that's not. not. That's not going to happen. Um, <clears throat> so that will be a frustrating one. Really, the best solution there is if you're totally gelled, bring the truck inside. Yep. Guys talk all the time about, oh, I let it idle for 20 minutes. Oh, I let it idle for two hours. Oh, I let it idle all night and it just died. Well, of course it did. You're not mixing that fuel. It's still just sitting there in these extreme cold conditions. It's going to gel. Yeah. Uh, to get it to actually <clears throat> thaw out completely, you probably just need to bring the truck into an inside garage and let it warm up, and then it'll work. From there, you can look at things like a fast heater and some other yeah. products out there uh, to help. I wouldn't say to no, solve that problem, but to help. It's definitely not going to solve the issue. Plugging your truck in in the wintertime is not going to solve the issue. I mean, yeah. letting the truck run all night? Uh, still, it's no, still we've not. Still, no, still it's seen not that one fail. It, so. yeah. It's a tough situation. Uh, carport? I, there, there's no good answer, no. unfortunately, when it comes to this stuff. Do it. Uh, a buddy of mine did it. Uh, he said he put a tarp on his vehicle with a torpedo heater feeding. No, he yes, didn't. he did. But he's a, he's a, I mean, he's a special breed. He's that, a that's all rod. I'm going to say. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that, he's a but he is a definition rod. of a hillbilly. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> a lot of love for the hillbillies out there. <laughs> um, okay. And that, and, and that brings us into the other side of Exergy's do's and don'ts segment, which is do run anti-gel additive. Yeah. So we're saying don't pour a bottle of 911 into your truck. But like I loved that house. Um, but it's expensive. How, dude, it's not, expe dude, it's not it's ex expensive. It's not expensive. It's not as expensive as a tow. I have to pay $2.80 a, a gallon for fuel and then I have to buy additive? Yeah, you cheap fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're not paying for a tow. You're not trying to figure out a warm place to park your vehicle because your shit gelled. Yeah. So, absolutely. So, so don't leave your truck on a quarter tank of fuel and with no additive in it. And it parked outside in negative 20 degree weather and expect to drive to work in the morning. And don't call Paul or I to ask why your truck gelled the fuck up. <laughs> Just don't do it. For that extension, you can dial 2127. <laughs> it's a deadline. <laughs> no, it's the new guy. <laughs> we got a new guy over at Duramax. Too. He listens to this, too. Like, I know. He's an advocate listener. I know. Yeah. Big shout out to JP. Joined us over at the Duramax Tuner crew. Great guy. Uh, for those of you who get to work with him, it, it will be a privilege. Uh, we, do, we do enjoy working with JP. Uh, okay, so that is it from the Exergy Do's and Don'ts segment. Real quick, last shout out for Exergy, uh, top of the line fuel system products. So if you're looking for injectors, CP3 pumps, modified injectors, modified pumps, if you just need fuel rails and little or things like that for your injection FCA. system. Replacement FCA. They got you. Right. They, they are set up. Uh, they are the only high pressure fuel system vendor that we have. Because they're the ones that we trust. Yeah. Just as simple as that. Stamp of approval. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Duramax Tuner has graciously sponsored a new segment for Diesel Performance Podcast. Chris, this is going to be called the Diesel Insights yeah. uh, segment. Now, for those of you who already follow Duramax Tuner on Facebook and YouTube, you've probably caught a few Diesel Insights episodes already. There was a soft launch on these Rich, what, what did I do those? About a year ago? We first tried, we did like three three to five episodes. They were really short, just yeah. snippets of information. They were, they were a crash and burn because of your ugly ass face. They were. Yeah, Check. for sure. Check. Uh, yeah, they were not popular. Then all of a sudden you throw Nick in front of a camera Boom. and everybody's like, oh, I fucking love yeah. everything you do. Uh, no, yeah. but it's, it, the it's, truth. it's probably because he yeah. was a lot better and picked a lot better content oh, yeah. and presented it in a much better way, which is totally fine. That's what Nick's good at. Uh, this week we're diving into the... Dead pedal. Yeah. So they recently did an episode on Diesel Insights about the dead pedal. Now, this is across all, all OEMs. Platforms. Yep. So it doesn't matter if you have a 2.8 liter Duramax, a 6.6, a Power Stroke, a Cummins. All of the new diesels that have emissions equipment have what we describe as a dead pedal. Now, this is a dead pedal itself really just means that you hit the pedal and the truck doesn't go. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, as the video describes for the guys who haven't watched it, the, mm -hmm. there's two parts. There's the latency from the initial response of the throttle uh, where you have to go, you know, 20, 25 percent for the truck to actually register and get out of its own way. Yeah. Um, then there's the second aspect of the dead pedal where um, the best is, man, I have a 400 horse truck, but it don't feel like no 400 <laughs> horse. You know, they're driving 40, 50, 60 mile an hour and they have to get so aggressive into the throttle because the transmission's holding a, a lock up, a lock up in a gear yeah. and the truck just it has to get so aggressive in the throttle response for it to actually unlock and downshift. Right. So, you know, there's something where, you know, again, we talk about this a lot at the shop. It 
there is tuning options to improve on that. Yeah, r- really so. simple. So a, a basic spade, LML spade, will set you up with the tunes you need yeah. to change the computer parameters. Really what the, the root cause here is the factory calibration is just very, very much on the soft side when it comes to your truck feeling responsive on the road. Uh, there is turbo lag. These aren't gas engines. So yeah. you are going to press the throttle and it's going to take a, a, an amount of time, a short amount of time it, for it, the turbo to come up and boost. As it applies more boost and there's more air, it will then send more fuel, right? So All about a given RPM. It's all about exhaust energy, driving the exhaust wheel to allow the compressor wheel to throw air into the engine. Right. Um, you know, and like, as you said, you know, the LMLs, we have fixes for for the Rams and the new power strokes. Um, but, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, between calibrated power and Duramax tuner, uh, no matter which one of the big three you have, uh, you definitely can get set up with the tunes to get rid of that dead pedal, make the truck feel more responsive, and really bring it to life. Um, I'd say that that's really it for this week's Diesel Insights. We're going to go a little bit further into these as the weeks yeah, progress. I'm really excited about this. Now, again, we're, we're giving the videos a couple weeks to surface. Mm-hmm. So the videos that we touch on next week is something that's already been out. So we want you guys to have the ability to take a look at it. If you hadn't had an opportunity, go to the you know Facebook pages, check them out. There's quite a few of them. We're not going to touch on every one of them. So you know, take a look, see what we have to offer there. Awesome. Industry news, our... Our next segment here for today's episode, uh, we we want to really start being a resource for our listeners to know exactly what's going on, what's current in the diesel industry. Because if you jump on Facebook, you're listening to a lot of nut swingers talk about things they don't know anything about. It's just the truth yeah. of it. And I just want to say shout out to Alligator Performance because those are the guys that are allowing us to have these this segment Absolutely. go live on our on our channel. So, Absolutely. You know, uh, with the with the UCC, which I hate to say it is right around the corner. Um, you know, the the industry news that we have for you this week is going to be regarding the Ultimate Call Out Challenge qualifiers. Dude, how exciting is this? So, so qualifiers. What Chris- is? I was going to ask you. So <laughs> walk us through. So we had the UCC competition last year. Yep. Okay. Now this year they're bringing in a whole new um, contest or, third, or, you know, competition. Third, okay. So there's 30 competitors who are competing in the UCC just like last year. Yep. No, that has not changed. What they've added is a chance for people to earn a seat at next year's UCC competitor event. Hence the qualifier. Hence the qualifier. So they're bringing in all of these guys who are going to bring in their trucks, and they're going to compete in the same events, although at a different time. So in other words, drag racing will be going on while they're sled pulling. Okay. Sled pulling will be going on for the competitors while the qualifiers are dynoing. So there's constantly something going on at this event. So this is just a fucking mega truck fest this year. Like last year was a big deal. This year... Mind blowing. Right? I think what's really cool is this is the beginning of how a professional sport takes off. There's now now not only big money that goes into the UCC competitors and pretty much all shop sponsored. Yeah. Like even the the privateers out there um, still have a big shop sponsor to make that happen. But now they're opening it up and they're saying this competition isn't just about who we like. It's not just about who we know. It's not just about who asked us to get in first. There's now going to be rules. There's going to be qualifications you have to compete at to be able to make it into this round next year. It's funny to think, you know, we had, uh, you know, Chris Sherrill and James Brundle a few weeks ago on, the, on, on our podcast. And, uh, you know, they are like the founding fathers of what's going to be the Diesel Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's really what this is. So it's really cool to be at the forefront of that as well. Absolutely. So. And again, big shout out to Alligator for sponsoring the UCC along with Diesel uh, Performance Podcast. We're going to run through the nine competitors that have currently been announced. Chris, why don't you take the odds and I'll take the evens? I like it. So uh, what ended up launching, I would want to say at the beginning of the year, right? Mm-hmm. They, they started yep. in January. Um, Andrew Jones. Andrew so that Jones. is the uh, the first UCC qualifier 2018. Absolutely. And then, of course, we have Arch Stalkner. Stalk Knacker. Stalk Knacker. I like Arch it. Arch Stalk Knacker. We'll, we'll get better at your name as we go on. Number three is Brad Daniel. Number f- six, Chris Krebs. I threw you off there on purpose. You did. Number five is Brandon Marr. Number eight is David Petrick. Number seven is David Casper. 
And number nine is Jacob Zodi. Now, everybody noticed that I missed number four, and that is because today's special guest on our episode is going to be Charlie fucking Keeter. You know, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to interrupt you and say Charlie motherfucking Keeter. <laughs> Dominated DPC. Now he's coming to get a taste of the UCC. I like it. That's it, man. From big time, from little time to big time, uh, we are kicking it off. Charlie Keeter, how the hell are you? Oh, same old, same old, man. How are y'all? Doing good, man. Doing good. I feel good. like Charlie is one of the co-hosts, because he's been on here so many times. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shit. Charlie, we talked to you both times after winning Diesel Power Challenge. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase it. After dominating Diesel Power Challenge. There, good correction. Um, and, and it hurt every time we had to call you, and I had to talk to somebody who had so much love for the six leaders. After I have talked so much blatant shit about them, uh, it really made me look like an asshole. I, I'm sure everybody loved that. You are an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Well, when things are true, they're true. What can you do, right? Uh, <laughs> Charlie, you you were not invited back to Diesel Power Challenge being a two-time reigning champion. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, because they have a limit. You yep. can only win it twice. twice. So just like LeVon, you got kicked out. Uh, is that is that just why you wanted to get in at the UCC qualifier? Did you just still want to compete? No, I mean, I like that style of competition. Um, they actually invited me to compete in the main event with all the big shots and I'm not a big shot so I declined that and uh, wow. Anthony Reams a cocksucker he is he talked me I into I like that too <laughs> about yeah, that he way talked, <laughs> he, talked, <laughs> he talked me into competing uh, you know entering the qualifier for some reason I agreed to it <laughs> but Anthony Reams is the driver of the XDP truck uh, all season long for the NHRDA races and for the Ultimate Callout Challenge. Why didn't you want to compete with him? Why didn't you want to fuck around with the big dogs, man? You got that badass six zero, big swinging dick. Oh, yeah, no, it ain't. It's not. It's on a different tier than those guys. Okay, okay. If you win the qualifier, are you going? Because if you win the qualifier, you're invited to compete next year in the UCC itself as a competitor. If you win the qualifier, or is 2019, can we expect to see you as a competitor then? Uh, maybe, but I doubt it. I think the top five trucks out of the qualifier get invited to uh, get invited to UCC 2019. Yeah. I mean, one of the things here with these contests, and it's something that we've always talked about at the shop and just, you know, friends, amongst friends, it, it, Power is one thing, but a driver is something else. And, and Charlie, you've already proven that you know you know your truck and you can drive the truck. So you have to be going into this with a decent head on your shoulders, knowing that you have a good potential of being one of the top five, you know, winners or place top I don't five. Know, not the way Char Charlie's the most humble guy we've ever interviewed. And, come on, dude, he has statistics to fall back <laughs> on here. Like, yeah, I, mean, I feel like my truck does pretty well. I mean, it's not a new dyno. You know, it's not a, it's not going to win the dyno part of it, but well, I don't know. I feel like it can be consistent across the board. Right. You got driver mod. Give, That's more than a dyno number, man. <laughs> Give our listeners a rundown. What did you have on the truck last year at Diesel Power Challenge for turbos, injectors, and setup like that? The, I mean, it was basically the same truck. The only thing I changed between the two years was I went to two low pressure ball bearing turbos from KC turbos and uh and O Dog's diesel he uh he came out with a a cast a casted ported manifold so to speak. Okay. Like the old manifold was they cut a factory one open, you know, milled it down on the inside, welded it back together. He actually has his own castings now. Oh and, gotcha. uh, yeah, I mean that was really it. So now it is, um, it is a triple turbo. Uh, how big of injectors do you run in that thing, or did did you run in that thing in in sixteen and seventeen? Uh, the seven millimeter hybrids from Warren Diesel. It uh, I mean I haven't changed anything, any of that stuff yet. Yeah. Um, and uh -huh. it's plenty of air there, you know, for my for my particular setup. 
dealing, you know, being on Facebook and being friends with some of the, the qualifiers, you know, you see these things where guys trucks aren't together. They're waiting. Uh, your, your truck is currently together. You, you kind of made a, a hint of these are what I have on the truck. Do you plan on changing the setup or are you just bringing what you already have and keeping the truck in one piece as it sits now? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be pretty much the same truck. A couple of things will definitely be changed. Um, more towards uh, the drag racing more than anything. Okay. Um, and it should make, uh, hopefully make a little more power this cool. year coming up. Not a whole lot, but a little bit more. Well, I guess that that touches on one of the points that I had as we've got to interview KJ from Diesel Power Magazine. We've got to interview uh, the guys from the UCC. Everybody knows that there's this real clear distinction between Diesel Power Challenge and Ultimate Callout Challenge. Diesel Power Challenge is really driven towards these like street-driven trucks, current builds, like real users, real readers, building awesome trucks. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Ultimate Callout Challenge is like... Like you said, I got parts from Warren Diesel. They have a truck at the Ultimate Call Out Challenge. Yeah. Like, this is big shops, big money, big names, the baddest shit in the country. Uh, but there's also a huge difference in what you do when you go to this event. Like, it's not run, 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 run. You go in on Friday, and you have all day to just go set your best time. If you go out in the morning and your first pass is your best pass, and you don't feel like you need to do anything else, you're done competing. Right. Right? Yeah, so, and that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> keep it together, man. Just keep it together. Literally got to it before I could ask it. Okay, so your plan is, is just to stay simple and, and have as few passes on this truck as possible, or is your plan to, like, there's a goal for, for your quarter-mile time, and you're going to keep going until you hit that goal? No, I mean, I'm going to have it. I'm going to go. We have a local event in March here that I'm going to go to, and then there's Rudy's in April. If the truck survives through those two races, um, you know, I'm, 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 it's going to be... I plan on having it dialed in before I even go to the track on, I think, the first event, March 24th. I plan on having it, you know, I plan on having every my shit together before I even go to the track with it. There you go. I like it. That'll be a first. Yeah. How many? I don't know how many guys I interviewed last year for the UCC that their first pass was literally at the but, UCC. But that's, that's again, that's Charlie's added advantage, and that's I'm going to call you seasoned if I will. So you have the experience. So you're planning on having the truck ready to go by March. So you're going to have an idea because you have experience with the truck of what the truck should do. So you unload the truck first day at UCC, you run the truck at the track. You know exactly what it's supposed to do. If it does what you want it to, then that's it. You don't have to push it any further. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm going to go out there and try to make, you know, one dyno pool, one track pool, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be all out there on the first pass. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I love it, man. He's like, I think he has a lot of self control. Like, if I were to go to the casino with him, I think he leaves ahead. He, oh, he'd leave with money no, in his pocket. Not yeah, me. No, not me. No, 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 uh-uh. no, no, no. Pouring dimes into the <laughs> yeah. slot machine on hey, the way out and you shit. You haven't even been with me, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so Charlie, though, now if I remember correctly, at Diesel Power Challenge, you did very well in just about every event. Right, like you, you, you ranked highly in each event and got a lot of points in each event, but maybe didn't necessarily win it, five of the eight events or whatever. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I won the uh, the heads up drag racing, and for some odd reason, I was able to win the slid pool. <laughs> for some odd reason, that's so awesome. humble. I know, right? Um, but this year you're not pulling points in a lot of categories. You get three, you get three events. Is, did that make any impact on your strategy? No, I mean, I don't, I really don't care to be honest with you. I'm going to go out there and have a good time and hopefully keep the truck together. If I, you know, place in the top five, then so be it. If I don't, then I've learned something and met some more people. I mean, his goal here isn't, he just wants to go to UCC, but he wants to enjoy the truck the rest of the summer. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I got another baby and stuff on the way. UCC is probably going to be my, uh, probably my cutoff for the year. I might try to go to a couple more local events, but okay. that's going to be, that's going to be about it. Well, well congratulations. congratulations. Uh, yeah, thanks. No problem. It's exciting. No problem. Um, Okay, so is there a single event you think, like out of the dyno, the sled pull, and the drag race, where do you think you're going to do best? You said probably not the dyno, huh? 
No, I mean, I feel like the truck's going to put down a good number, but, you know, some guys, I mean, it's no telling us what kind of power number some of them are putting, you know, going to try right. to put down anyway. Right. But I can about assure you when I make my little 12, 13, 1400 horsepower, whatever it's going to be, that my shit's going to drive off of there and I'm going to be ready for the next day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quote of the day. I love it. Is there is there an event that you're really confident in? Where do you think you're going to do the best? I mean, the drag racing is where the, the truck shines most of the time. What's your best time in it so far? It's been nine nine eighty and a quarter. Holy and a crew fuck. cab. And a crew I cab know. Ford. I know. It just it makes my whole body cringe. Dude, um, I want to hear. I want to know what a six liter sounds like going nines in the quarter mile with three turbos. With three fucking turbochargers. Yeah. yeah, that's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> Man, does all right for what it is. <laughs> are you? Are, are you? Now you said sled pulling really not your thing, huh? No, I mean, but I know how to. I ain't gonna say I know how, but I just go out there and give it hell and see where it lands. Now listen, there's a lot of science that goes into sled pulling, but driving ain't rocket science, right? There's a there's a wheel and a pedal. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, if you know your truck, you know what it's doing, what you know, tire spin, wheel speed, and all that stuff. Are you bringing Are you bringing some backups? I mean, this is UCC. You're not tied down to one set of tires for the whole weekend. Like, you could swap out different tires to sled pull with, different tires to dyno with, different tires to drag race with. Are you planning on any like on site changes? I hope not. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to have, <laughs> I'm, I'm have my uh, slicks for the track, of course. And then, you know, I might, if I can scratch up a set of tires or something, I might put a different set of tires on it for the slip pool. That's, and that's, but, that's literally it. That's, that's all it. your, that's, that's the strategy. That's the whole, what's the backup plan? What happens if shit goes wrong? What if it blows up? He goes home. Yeah, I'm going to stay there and watch the rest of the people blow their shit up. <laughs> Charlie, we wish you so much luck. We, uh, Chris and I will actually be at the event. We'll be up in the media tower the whole weekend avoiding any sort of inclement weather, uh, mostly because I'm such a pansy I won't deal with it. He is really a bitch. And then uh, we will make sure that during the event we drag you up there and do a live interview with you at the show. How's that sound? That sounds good. Like I said, I hope if the truck will make it through... Uh you know, that race in March and then Rudy's in April, then we're definitely planning on being there. Hell yeah. I love it. Uh, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Mm, I mean, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Literally my all time favorite fucking interview. Thank you so much, Charlie. All right, yeah. Have a good one. Uh, listeners, right. this has been Paul Wilson and Chris Emke. Have a great weekend. Calibrated Power Solutions, the leading North American developer of clean diesel power and home of DuramaxTuner.com, is the proud sponsor of the Diesel Performance Podcast. Calibrated Power develops emissions-equipped calibrations for a wide variety of diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, Jeep, John Deere, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920. That's 815-568-7920. If you'd like to contact the Diesel Performance Podcast, send us a message through Facebook or email paul at duramaxtuner.com or chris at c-e-h-m-k-e at duramaxtuner.com. You can also reach him by phone. Chris's extension is 2121. Paul's is 2122. After I have talked so much blatant shit about them, uh, it really made me look like an asshole. I, I'm sure everybody loved that. You are an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs>